Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Shen Plays. Welcome back to the next Factorial Beginner's Guide with myself and Mr. Avak. How's it going, Avak? Hello, everyone. It is going fairly well, honestly. Can't complain. Well, you could, but there's not much point. <laughs> so, between episodes there, we have upgraded our base a little bit. We've moved over to armor-piercing round production instead of instead of the base ammo production. So we've removed the regular yellow ammo production up there in the north, and we put this uh, better ammo production in the south. And the reason yeah. you do this is because once you've researched armor producing rounds and you can start producing them in mass like this, there really is no need to keep the yellow rounds around. No. You don't need to keep producing them. No. The only reason you might want to keep the yellow round is initially it's, it's fairly steel um, intensive. It does use a lot of steel to set this up. For the red but, ones. Yeah, for the red ones, because it, its components is copper and steel, which and, and steel is several plates of iron. But once you've got a reasonable amount of smelting going on, it's better in every measurable way. There's no downside to using it, other than its higher resource cost. Yep. So other things we've done between episodes, if we move the western wall, we moved it maybe about 40 tiles to the west, because yep. we plan on expanding our base in that direction. Mm -hmm. And as your base grows, you're going to have to move walls specifically, but you may also need to move some of the components of your base around. Yeah. Like eventually we're going to have to make room to, to get some oil production going. We're going to have to move some more other production out of the way. In fact, we uh, moved also, our stone production down here out of the way correct. in order to expand our copper smelting um, mm -hmm. setup. Because as Shen was about to mention there, once you're out of the very early game, initially copper isn't that big of a thing. But you mid and late game, copper is a huge huge uh, important thing mostly because almost everything requires circuits and circuits require copper so you are going to you know copper isn't always going to be um, this trifling concern it's never quite going to be used in the sort of quantities that iron is but you're going to want a good um, copper smelting operation mm -hmm. and now that we've researched steel we've also introduced steel furnaces in our entire production line so this means we're going to be smelting things a lot faster the steel smelters are twice as fast as iron smelters, and I can already see that we're, we this this line of smelting is so long that we're not even able to smelt, we're not even able to bring ore all the way down to the end of the line. Yeah, only a couple of so them we'll have being to, used. We'll have to upgrade this later on so that we get a little better production out of it. But for now, this is uh, pretty good. And what we've done, if you have new smelters, like we have steel smelters now, they're called steel furnace, and you want to replace your old ones, you don't have to pick up your old smelter. You can no. just click on the new one and bring it over the old one and it shows green and click on it and you just replace the old one. And it's really easy to do this. You can do the same thing with your factories as well. If you have a gray factory and you want to upgrade it to a blue factory, you just click on your blue factory, you drag it over it and you can plunk it down right like that. It's worth so noting that when you do this, the inventories of the original buildings are preserved. You may have noticed with the smelter up uh, when I replaced mine, I had a look. It already had five coal in it because the original smelter had five coal in it. Down right. here, this probably already has, yeah, the max amount of red beakers in there because that was already in the uh, output. Actually, did you replace that? You did, didn't you? I did. I put yeah. the blue one down, then I put a gray one on All top right, well, it. in that case, it, it, the <laughs> inventory was shifted around twice, but it's worth noting that that, that happens. Now, that actually brings me on to something, uh, a bit of a correction that was posted in the comments on the first couple of videos. I originally mentioned that if you try to pick up a chest and you don't have enough internal inventory in order to carry everything in the chest, that it would explode all over the floor. That is not the case anymore. Well, let me find a chest that is completely chock-a-block full of something. Uh, this one should do. This one. Uh, I shouldn't be able to pick this up. Yes, I can, because I've got enough inventory. Ah, damn it, chest. Why, why are you showing me up like this? Okay, well, let me uh, anyway. pop that back down. What he's saying is it no longer explodes items all over the floor. This Indeed. was behavior that it, that was in an older version of Factorio. They've since fixed that, so no, it doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Um, so what else have we done before we get into the meat? Well, today's episode is going to be covering building an outpost to yep. gather resources and then bring them back to your base. But before we get into that, there's a lot of things we need to do. And one of the things we have to do is do four specific technologies. Would you like to hit them up, Avak? Uh, yeah, certainly. Right, to get to trains, 
The nice thing about the technology system in Factory is you can work backwards to see the prerequisites of what you need. And we want railways specifically because railways give us access to the diesel locomotive and the curved rail. Now that's enough to get you started. Ultimately, you want more because you actually want to have cargo wagons and that sort of thing. But to start with, all you need is this. Now, we need steel processing. We've already got that. It's in green. We also need logistics too and engines. Now, logistics too and engines are both yellow. It means that we can automatically get into those. So if we have a look at engines, this is going to give us the engine unit. And logistics too is just a component of railway. But uh, we actually will need the electric engine, oh, sorry, the engine unit to build the diesel locomotive. So that's why that is a requirement. The third technology that we don't technically need, but realistically we want, is gates. Because having a gate is a fairly important thing if you're going to have a train moving back and forth regularly. You don't want just a giant gaping hole in your wall to allow the train to move through. With gates, you can lay the gates across the track and it's intelligent enough to drop the gate and raise the gate as the train's passing to avoid colliding with the train, but to keep fighters out of your base. So it, it helps to shore up any issues with your defense. Mm -hmm. Gates essentially function just as a regular wall does, but mm -hmm. if the player or a train nears the gate, the gate will open yeah. and it will close behind it. So if you want to walk through a wall, you don't have to pick up the wall and place it again behind you. You just walk through the gate and it'll close automatically. Yeah. And it behaves the same way as trains pass through. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and get started on this research here. I guess we'll start with logistics. One too. last part of the technology we do want to cover. I did mention that it isn't necessary, but that's only true if you just want to use the train as a means for moving from A to B. If you want to set up an automated train to carry cargo back and forth for you, which we do, that that's like the, the most fun part of trains for me, is you are going to need automated rail transportation because that gives you the cargo wagon, yeah, but it gives you the train stop, which is most important of all. Ultimately, you need both for a fully automated system, but uh, train stops would also allow you to, to have a, a semi-automated just um, passenger train if you wanted. But that only has a requisite of railway. So this is the ultimate one we want to get to. So ra it, it's uh, automated rail transportation. For that, we need railway. For railway, we need engines and logistics too. And Shen is yep. already working on logistics too. Logistics too. Uh, all these technologies are going to take some time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut and we'll come back when the tech is done mm -hmm. and we'll show you how to get started building the components you need for railway production. And then we'll go we'll go kick some biters off of this iron that we want to grab in the east, and we'll start setting up an outpost over there. Ah, uh, glorious outposts. All right, we'll see you guys in a minute. Take care, everyone. And welcome back, everyone. We have changed a few things. Not very much, though. We'll cover that in a little bit. But mostly, we have gotten all of the research done. I'm currently just researching bullet damage, too, simply so that we keep research moving so we're not wasting time but at this point shen and i are now ready to start creating automated manufacturing of the components that we're pretty much going to need a lot of throughout the whole campaign so things like engines you will use engines quite a lot they're also a component for some later things as well especially once you get into robotics engines you will probably never be making enough Cars. ever the cars and tanks and the train itself, we're not going to automate because you typically only build a few of those through an entire game, but you will build hundreds and thousands of engines. Uh, likewise, we'll build a lot of tracks because any rail um, two points, they, there's going to be a lot of track involved in any kind of rail setup. So that's also a useful thing. And well, there'll be a few other things, odds and sods here and there that we'll also cover. So Shen, what would you like to start on? I think we're going to start off with engines. So if we head to our crafting menu in the right, so. intermediate products tab, we can see engines down here. It requires steel plate, which we have on the belt system already, mm -hmm. requires gears and pipes. And we've done gears before. They're simply iron plates manufactured into pipes or into gears. Mm -hmm. And pipes we haven't done before, but it's the exact same process. Yeah. Iron plates into pipes. So all we're going to need off of our main bus here is siphoning off some of this steel and bringing up some of this iron. Sounds easy enough? Yep. So why don't I split off some of the iron? Can you grab the steel for me? Uh, yep, certainly. And this is typically the way you handle things in your factory. Do you want yes. it running I... alongside the belt? Just two abreast sort of thing? 
Yeah. Oh, you want them on the same belt like we did with the copper down here? Uh, we uh. could do, or given how much it, steel we're going to be using, I think we don't need much if all we're going to be making is engines here, because you just need okay. one steel versus the iron, which is used in two separate components. So we're probably yeah. good with having Sounds steel good to and me. iron on the same belt. What we've done down here is we split off two items from our quote-unquote main bus. Thank you. And we've merged them onto one belt. And you can have different items on the same belt. And it's just a very easy way to get small amounts of items uh, in a specific place. Yeah. And for this type of product, this engine, we don't need anything more than iron and steel. So this is just fine. And it's not large amounts either. It's only one gear, one pipe, or two pipes, and one steel plate. It's not that much stuff. Mm. Oh, so we're going to attack down here. You can yeah. see... Ah, if we mouse over the little exclamation, it says walls are being damaged. That's what you want to see. You yes. always want to see that. <laughs> I'll go and if you see, uh, if you see anything those. other than walls being damaged, then you have to go check it out. <laughs> yeah. Our tool belt's finished. Look at that. All right, the tool belt gives us an extra inventory uh, spot on the bottom. Um, you can click on the little like recycle almost looking icon or cycling icon, and it'll move. Which, tool, which uh, row of your inventory is at the top or the bottom of the tool belt? Your hotkeys, one, two, three, four, and all that, they correspond to the top. So I can just select these items by the relevant hotkey. I can press Q to put it back on the belt and release my cursor. But uh, I forget what key it is to rotate them. Ah, X. There we go. You can rebind these, though. But for me, X toggles them, and then whatever one's on the top, I can use my number hotkeys to pick it out. Now, what Shen is doing here is each engine takes 20 seconds to make. So given that Long we're time. producing the required um, components to make an engine every second, you can have 20 of these factories, and we wouldn't run out of the pipes or the gears. We're not going to. No right. matter what Shen says. <laughs> we almost have enough engines for one locomotive right now. Great. Fantastic. So while that's building engines for us, Avax is going to get started on rail production. Rail production, right. Uh, these Now, this is one of the big things that requires stone. We've mentioned that, that not everything is going to require brick. You are going to need the raw stone for a few things, and rail track is probably one of the bigger ones. Also, um, anything that has a boiler, uh, or rather a... Um, are they actually boilers? No, stone furnace as a component. That's one of the other obvious places you're going to need stone, just in its raw form. So you don't always want to turn everything into brick. Now, this is going to require four stone for a curved rail, one stone for a straight rail. We get two from either one. Uh, we also need iron sticks and steel plates as well. So we're going to need the second tier factories because there's three components here. So we're going to need a box for the stone, honestly. This stone is, at the moment, a fairly difficult resource for us to come by because we've got a start that just isn't very stone rich. That'll happen sometimes. Sometimes you'll have starts which are iron poor or copper poor. Those are significantly harder to deal with. Stone you can get by, but uh, it is it is hard. So yeah, if for we, now, if we, go if, ahead. Sorry, but if we check the map, you can see we really don't have a whole lot of stone anywhere nearby. No. Like there's, There are little dots, single pixels of stone here and there. But there just isn't that much that we can collect nearby. And that probably no. is something we're going to have to build an outpost for very soon here. Because mm -hmm. even though we don't need tons of stone over the course of the game, we do need a source. And right now our source is almost dry. So that's yeah. part of the reason why we're planning to do this outpost pretty soon here. Yeah. One of the first outposts we will be making is we'll go and grab some iron. But the, the second one is probably going to be a stone outpost. And that's kind of funny, at least to me, the idea yeah, that we're going to have to build a train outpost to gather stone. It's, it's not a common... Um, occurrence at least uh, as far as I've seen now as far as the actual inputs here we need iron sticks so we're only going to need a little bit of iron um, let's have a look at how much we get we get two iron sticks for one iron plate it only takes 0 0.5 seconds to make that means Very we could make recipe. yeah we could make um, a curved rail only takes 0 0.5 seconds and we need four iron sticks for that so we'd need two factories just to supply one curved rail factory and we'd need one factory to supply two straight rail factories but that does offer us some uh benefit here because it means that we can get 
all of the iron in this entire recipe is only the iron sticks. Everything else then is steel and stone. And we can actually just get by with a single belt carrying the, the steel and stone. So much as we've got over here. Now, you might be thinking that, and this is something that I didn't specifically mention over here because it's not actually that necessary here because each of these engines takes 20 seconds and there was no way we were going to produce enough input to run it at its max efficiency. But this factory produces things faster than this factory, so it's not... Generally, if you want a clean um, ratio of factories... Uh, and their outputs use the same type of factory even if you don't need to because their crafting speed is different. So for that, with the, with the trains, because I'm going to be operating much closer to the, the maximum uh, output of the end factory, even though I only need a level 1 factory for the iron um, bars, I'm going to use a level 2 factory for us just so that it's producing things at the same speed as the uh, later factories. Okay, right, well, we've got the engines made, we've got the rail track being automated. I'm going to move down a little bit more defenses into this area, but while I'm doing that, Shen is going to work on one of the last little things that we had discussed that we were going to need to automate, and that is repair packs. Ah, right, Because right, I'm right. definitely starting to run low. They're very easy to make, but you're going to use them in enormous quantities. Okay, so repair packs are something you're going to want to have automated for sure. Early game, not super important. I mean, I've, I think I built 20 at the start of the game, and I've still got 14. And that's we've been repairing stuff all the time. Um, but later on, you're going to want repair packs to be automated because robots will be doing repairs for you. Yes. And you're going to have to feed the robots all the repair packs that they need. So you're going to have to have it automated. Repair packs take, as a recipe, we check our production tab here, they take electronics and gears. It's pretty much the same thing that goes into an inserter. So the exact mm -hmm. same way we set up this inserter area, we're going to set up to produce repair packs. So I'll find a nice spot over here to funnel some iron and copper down. I guess I can do it over here. Don't be afraid to move things around in your factory. We've had to Never do it multiple afraid. times. You're going to have to do it multiple times in any factory you make. It's just part of having a factory. It's not that big of a deal. Some okay, people do so challenge good. themselves to kind of build the perfect factory right from the beginning, to have a plan in mind. It's kind of like mm -hmm. following instructions at that point, and uh, it, there's definitely a charm to it. But certainly, I actually kind of like the kind of organic sprawl that occurs <laughs> if you just build things up. I'm, I'm very much is... a fan of the oldie-worldy cities, for example. What he's saying is he likes his messy factories. Yes. That's yes. what he's saying. Organic sprawl. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> there should be a castle right in the middle, and then the villagers just kind of build up on the outside, and you just add little bits on here and there as you need it until you've got like this weird spider's web of little twisty turny alleyways and little tea shops and twisty places. Twisty turny, eh? Yeah, twisty turny. Timey wimey, too. Having a chest with a spare gun and a bunch of ammo in it, also some spare armor. That is really, really a good idea, because you you may well die. You might not, and I don't generally recommend planning for failure, but... Oh my goodness, Avak, this is something that, I don't know how you didn't, didn't touch on this, but someone did mm -hmm. mention it, and they're absolutely right. Um, if you die in a single-player game, it's game over. Oh yes, that's a very, the very game good just point. Ends. Yes. And that's something that we don't really experience too often, because Avak and I, we usually play multiplayer games of yeah. Factorio. And in a multiplayer game, if you die, it's not so bad because nothing happens. Like I could shoot Avak right now, he would Please die, don't. and you see a message on the screen, he has died and he'll respond in like Avak has things on him that he doesn't want to lose. Avak is going and somewhere else. So he'll just respawn in like fifteen seconds. But that doesn't happen in single player mode. So just keep no. keep that in mind. We, we, we went kamikaze against those alien bases because we've done it a hundred times. But if you're point, you know, in a situation where you're losing too much health, just get out Bail of there. Out, yeah. Go back to your turrets. Stay safe. <laughs> Single player is dangerous. Yeah. Okay. So I also, have my electronics. Also, regular saves very important. Oh yes, definitely. So I have my electronics. Next thing I need is gears. Okay. Not any problem. Let's get some gears over here. In fact, I'll split this off. Oh, I know what to do. Oh, watch. This is going to be glorious. Avak, you ready for glory? Yes. Oh, he's ready for glory. I'm always ready right. for glory. So we're going to use a red gravel to pick up some iron. Then we're going to put our gears on the same belt. And this is this is just being silly here. We're going to put our gears on the same belt as the electronics. 
There we go. Don't okay, don't then... be afraid. If you set up your factory and you do things like having um, two different things on the belt, some people will point out that there is a, a reduction in, in throughput as a result of that, and that is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. um, by having gears on one side of the belt, you've not got gears on both sides of the belt, so obviously you're not moving as many gears along that belt as you could, and you could be maxing it out, and, and that is how you would build for further expansion. If you were going to be making a gigantic factory where you really just wanted to be you know, not, not satisfied with 100 units made per minute, you want several thousand units made per minute, then having things on a split belt, very rarely the optimum um, strategy to use. But if you're just playing for the sake of getting to the end of the game, just experiencing the game, then don't be afraid to make things a little bit messy, to make things a little bit squirrely. In fact, in many ways, I think a lot of people would agree that one of the uh, one of the nicest videos that anyone has ever seen of Factorio is the trailer where th that factory is just a mess. It's just oh, yeah. everything is chaos everywhere. There's trains running through the middle of the factory. That is literally just a death wish. Um, but it's glorious to watch it happening. And likewise, on the actual menu of the game, the factory that is on the splash screen, that is, that is a spaghetti factory. Everything is going everywhere. There's, there's, there's little rhyme or reason. Just every tiny little space that could occupy something that does something does, whether it's neat and clean and tidy and high throughput or not. And if you like that, then then enjoy it. That's whatever makes the game fun for you is the right way to play. Yep, that's a really important thing to, to keep in mind is don't feel pressured to build a certain way just because you see other people do it and they tell you that's correct. Also, for the record, don't build the way that I do because it is flat out not correct. And I will yeah. say that right now, but I enjoy it more and that's why I do it. I have our repair pack set up and this is certainly not the most efficient way to do it. I don't really care. They're going into a box right now and I'm not going to put a limit on it because we'll need a lot of repair packs. <laughs> All right, so what's the next thing? Right, well, how many? We've got 318 curved and 850 straight. We've got a lot of train track at this point. Are you saying it's time to build a locomotive? I would say that we have now completed the infrastructure necessary for us to move on to actually uh, plotting out our first our first track. Okay. But uh, we should we perhaps do that in the next episode? If you want. Yeah, I think this would be a good wrapping up spot here. We've finished all of the infrastructure necessary, and Shen is just getting rid of some rocks which are... Immovable. Yeah, you, the only way to get rid of them is just, literally just to destroy them. You can shoot trees, or you could just chop them down like a sane person. But, you know, <laughs> Shen, Shen needs to, to vent his rage. <laughs> but uh, in the next episode, we will actually be working on getting the train up and running and out to, to where it needs to go. And we've got everything ready. So, uh, yeah, we should be seeing the very first outpost. We'll probably spend the entire episode setting that outpost up as well. It's definitely a lot of fun to start expanding out because there are lots of different building concerns that you have to uh, keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm not sure if I think you probably touched on it. Before we head out, though, mm -hmm. uh, Avac is sourcing our... Yes. rail line production stone mm -hmm. with a box and this is something that may look a little weird like why don't you just run a belt of stone over here since it's going to be put on a belt anyway and the reason is we don't use much stone and later in the game you're going to be doing localized production via robots and when you have yes. that research done and that ability in your factory you're going to be wanting chests all over the place for the robots to move things around to the robots will eventually come over here drop off whatever you want. In this case, we want stone. They would bring the stone here, drop it off here, then it would go onto the belt into the factory. So that's something you can do later on. So don't don't be too uh, intimidated by, you know, forcing yourself to run belts everywhere. It's yeah. not necessary. But with that, we are actually out of stone. So <laughs> it's just as well that we've got so many rails already those, made because those are the those only ones we've got. Those learn to rue the day that they they uh, hoarded all of the stone on the map. Indeed. But that's going to be <laughs> it for us. If you'd like to take us out, Shen? Sure. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this little beginner's video on getting ready for rail, railways and trains. We'll see you next time. Take care. Have a good day.
Thank you.